So the other day I was having breakfast and um, God, I love breakfast. I was having oats and I usually put milk and honey and shaved almonds, things like that on my oats. Then I proceeded to tip some, you know, ground cinnamon onto my breakfast and my clever brain, I <laughs> oh, cracked me up, thought of this little pun, uh, cine grain, because you know, it's cinnamon, there's grain. See what I did there? Cine grain. So anyway, that was a few months ago. And um, ever since then, I pretty much couldn't stop thinking about it. All I could really think about was this, which is, uh, you know, it might look pretty boring, but this shit is freaking sick. Basically, what we can do with this is amazing. So, yeah, normally the idea is, what is this anyway? So this is a film scan from 35mm negative. And um, it's basically a negative that has not been developed with an image on it. And all we are seeing, hopefully you can see it amongst the compression of the web, all we are seeing is the grain structure of the film. Um, and that's what, where it's sort of got its nickname, um, cinema, film, cine grain, uh, whatever you want to call it. So anyway, what can we do with this stuff and why am I so excited about it? Well, let's have a look. So we're in Photoshop right now. And uh, what I'm going to do is just jump over to this shot of my gorgeous girlfriend, Laura McCann. Now, I shot this with a digital camera, and here if we just have a look at 100%, you can see it's very sharp, it's quite digital looking. And uh, one way to get around that, or sort of a creative effect that we can um, add to this, is put this grain on top of the image, like so. Now, right now, it looks absolutely terrible, because we need to use a blending mode. To blend those two together. Um, you'll see where I'm going with this in a minute and it's I think it's pretty damn exciting and I've got a free gift for all y'all. Anyway so uh, we have two layers here. The top layer is my grain and um, I'm just going to use the blending mode overlay and um, if you turn that on and off you can see what that's doing there kinda. So what it's done is it's allowed our bottom image to shine through and a sort of grain, this filmic grain to sit on top of our image and blend with our image and um, you know, without any tweaking at all, it starts to look kind of like film. So what we could do then is, you know, just add some uh, contrast to our image. So, you know, just uh, have a quick little play with that. It's starting to look pretty cool. And uh, we could uh, also make that black and white. And, uh, yeah. With a few tweaks and uh, this awesome technique of overlaying film grain on top of your digital image, you can get this really cool filmic look. I think it's cool anyway. And if it's a bit too strong, which it kind of is here, uh, all you can do is just go to that filmic layer and just drop the opacity off a little bit. So now you've still got that beautiful grain structure. You've still got the fine detail that the, the sensor captured in the first place. But you've got this beautiful filmic look as if it was shot on film. So, I so said that's all cool for the stills world. But what about video? I mean, when you're dealing with video, you're dealing with 24 frames a second. And if I was just to overlay this one piece of film grain, um, it wouldn't move. Now, when you're shooting film uh, with a film, a motion picture camera, every single frame has a different grain structure. So that just wouldn't work. It would look kind of silly. And uh, yeah, basically what we need is an actual video of the film grain um, you know, as it's being exposed. So fortunately, there are lots of different cool products. If you go up here and type into Google, type Cinegrain, uh, yeah, you'll see a whole lot of different types of products that are available. They're affordable and very, very cool. But, you know, I was sitting at home and it was, I don't know, almost midnight and I just thought, screw this, I'm gonna make my own cine grain. So I thought about it, how the hell am I gonna make my own cine grain? Each frame has to be unique, has to be different from the last, and if you think about it, one second has 24 different frames, it's gonna take me a long time. What if I was to create 32 seconds of cine grain? <laughs> well, that's exactly what I've done, and every one of these frames is unique, and the cool thing is, you can actually scan your own film grain in, replace this one uh, film grain scan with your new one, and whammo, you've got a whole 32 seconds of your own film grain to render out. And this is so cool, because I can just upload this on my blog, which I'm going to do, and you can download it for EDIUS, the project file. It's 11 megabytes with uh, the film grain scan. 
Thank you so much to whoever scanned that in on the internet. It's the only high-res film scan on the internet I could find, actually. So thank you so much. And, uh, yeah, I'm giving this away for free, and it's freaking awesome. We're going to have a look at some of the results in a second. But basically, uh, yeah, all I did was um, this film grain scan itself, we just go to the properties of it, it's 4,778 by 3119 which is roughly 12 megapixels worth of film scan. And the project that I'm creating here, or I have created, is about 8 megapixels. So I've had this extra room to play with. How did I create individual frames using this one piece of film? Well, basically all I did was I uh, laid it down, went into my layout tool, and if we just zoom out here, you can see that uh, with the layout tool, I've just repositioned my piece of film grain uh, a million times. And that means that every single frame is unique. So there's not a lot of variation, but trust me, there's enough. And when you play with this, uh, you'll see what I mean. It's comparable to products that you buy, I think. And uh, hopefully you guys get a lot out of this. So let's jump in and have a look at how we can use this. Uh, before we do, I'll just give you a quick heads up on how you would export this. So basically, you will download this project file for EDIA 7. And it should just open and look exactly like this. And as long as you put an out point here and an in point there, then you just go up to File, Export, Print to File. Now you can export it to whatever video file you like, but I recommend exporting it to a 10-bit video file and one with virtually no compression or no compression at all. Now I'm working with Grass Valley Products. I love Edius. It's the best editor out there. I'm going to get more into that later. And, um, but I like to use Canopus Grass Valley HQX which is an award-winning codec, and it's an awesome 10-bit codec. So, AVI, Grass Valley HQX, and what I'm going to do is go the highest quality, which is HQX Superfine. So, if we go Export, uh, one extra thing we can do to make it even better quality again is just go down to Custom, and do the Max Min Size, and put that up to 100. So, if we go Save, and I've called this one Homebrew Cinegrain Ultra HD, you'll notice it renders out to quite a large file, 4.6 gig, but trust me, this shit is worth it. All right, so now for the fun stuff. You've rendered out your uh, grain, and uh, here's my one. It's called Matt's Homebrew Cine Grain, and if we just have a look at that, and that's some 4K grain right there. The cool thing is every single frame is different, and uh, it might not look so great right now, but when we overlay it on top of some footage, it looks freaking sick. So. There's a few things uh, you can do, or well, a few things that I've been playing with. Here is a shot of my youngest brother, Benjamin. Hopefully he doesn't mind me using this. <laughs> and uh, yeah, um, this is when I first got my red camera, actually. I was just marking around with some uh, shots. But I thought this was a really good example of how we can get a super clean digital look and, um, and turn it into a bit more of a filmic, organic look. Now, unfortunately, I wasn't shooting with ND filters on this day, so the shutter speed is way up there. Shutter crimes, ahoy. So I'll just fit this image to the screen like so. And uh, what I'm going to do, just like in Photoshop, is have two layers. Bottom layer being the footage, and top layer being my homebrew. I'm just going to throw that on there. 32 seconds worth of glory. Now in EDIUS, if anything is larger or smaller or misfitting to the project size, EDIUS will just fit it from top to bottom. So as you can see, this homebrew is 4K, where if we go to the project settings of our current project, we're only in 1920 by 960. So the 4K footage has been shrunk down, but what we need to do is go to the layout properties of that. So click on the film grain, go to the layout tool, and you can see here in the stretch properties, it's only actually 44% of its actual size. So what we can do is make that 100%. And if I just shrink this view down a little bit, you can see I can move my grain. Um, it's much bigger than 1080p. I can move that around and we can just plonk that there, press OK. Now, next up, you're thinking, well, how the hell do we blend this? Where are our blend modes? If we go to Effect, go down to the bottom of Effects into the Kia, the Kia's folder, expand that, and then you'll find all the common blend modes, one being Overlay. So we just grab that Overlay mode and drag it down to the transparency portion of our video track. Now, this is probably a good time to uh, pimp my blog. Um, if I'm moving a little bit too fast or you're not familiar with uh, Edius, it's a free 30-day trial. Get on this shit. It's the best editor out there. And uh, for some free training, um, visit mattscottvisuals.com, which is 
the best cinematography blog you will ever come across. And um, if you go to the tutorial section at the top, there's, you know, a, around 20 hours or more free tutorials. Uh, a lot of them are EDIUS based. Um, even though I've designed them for EDIUS, you'll be able to pick up a lot of tips and tricks for just color grading in general. But I do go over, you know, there's five parts to a color grading series and then I actually go into transparency and I talk about alpha channels and blending modes and things like that. So if I am going a little bit fast, um, make sure you check out the free tutorials. There's um, heaps in there, some for Red Cine X even and Premiere Pro and some noise reduction stuff and DaVinci Resolve. Anyway, I love helping out the community, so yeah. So we've placed our cine grain on top of our video footage. We're going to use overlay and drag that onto the transparency track of our grain and whammo. Check this shit out. No color correction, no curves, no nothing. If you look at this, we've got instantly this 35mm film look. And, um, you know, it looks more like 800 ISO sort of grain here. It's quite large. But this is where the cool part comes into play. Now we can really customize uh, this homebrew film grain and get it looking as awesome as we want it to. <laughs> so what do I mean by that? Well, firstly, we can just press shift and we can drop the opacity just like in Photoshop. And we can change the intensity of the grain. Before we do that, let's just have a quick look at um, the differences between the grain and no grain. So if I click on the information palette of our top track, information, go to the layout tool, and instead of using the transform properties, I'm going to go to the crop, and I'm just going to crop it like so. And um, let's press OK there, and now you can see full screen how drastically different this is, and probably how over the top this film grain looks. So, how do we sort of combat that over-the-top look? Well, one of the ways is we can just simply press shift. Make sure you've enabled mix here. Press shift in the transparency section of our track, and uh, we can drag the opacity down to anything we like. Another quick and more accurate way to adjust the opacity of a track is just to right-click on that line, move all, and type, for example, say 65. And that's going to move it all down by 65%. And, you know, it's starting to look cool. It's starting to look like film. Let's just uh, have a look at the differences here. How awesome is that? So you've got this super crisp, super digital clean look on the left, and this sort of organic looking film look on the right. And remember, guys, this is free. I was freaking out about this last night. I'm super excited. And, um, yeah, so that's one way we can sort of back it off a little bit. But I'm going to go crazy with this. There's a whole lot more you can do. So another thing we could do is we could expand it so it's full 100%. So it's, uh, you know, 100% opacity. Let's go back to the layout tool, and this time, instead of making it 100%, this time I'm going to make it 50%. So make sure that I'm on the transform properties of my layout tool, and I just go stretch to 50%. Now, if we just get rid of our cropping from before, and make sure it's uh, in line with our project, actually, a really quick way to make it in line is if we just go up to preset and go fit width. And that's going to make it fit exactly in the middle. So we press OK to that. Now we have a much finer grain structure. Now to me, this is what looks sick. This looks like real 100 ASA film. I mean, look at the textures, the details. We haven't lost any resolution, but we've got this beautiful grain structure. And I'm just loving this. This is 100% opacity as well. So that's just simply dragging and dropping that grain clip Go to Effect, go to Overlay, drag that down there, and wham, we have this awesome film look in the works. So what about other characteristics of film? So yes, there is film grain, that's one characteristic, but what about the way highlights blow out? Or sometimes the way highlights bloom, it's called. So even um, on films like Django Unchained, you'll notice that all the highlights in that film, and a lot of other films in Hollywood do this as well, they've got this sort of beautiful glow to them where mid-tones and shadows don't. How do we achieve that in post? Well, it's real easy, and let's combine it with this film look that I've created as well. So what I'm gonna do is, we need three tracks to do this. I'm gonna move our film grain to the top layer, and I'm gonna duplicate our video track, just by click, drag, press control, and that'll create a duplicate. If you're working in Premiere Pro, if you, you can press Alt, drag, and it'll create a duplicate. So now we have two tracks, nothing seems to have changed as yet. What if we change the blend mode of the middle track to screen, now you can see this sort of blown out look. And next up, what I'm going to do is go to Effect, go to Gaussian Blur, which is a 10-bit filter. It's absolutely beautiful, this Gaussian Blur. And I'm just going to drop that down to about 
2%. So now we have this extremely uh, diffused sort of look, but we're still managing to hold on to sharpness because we're using a blending mode of screen. The only problem is that everything's glowing here. I just want the highlights to glow and bloom out. One way to control that blending mode, the way the screen blending works, is we can place an effect called YUV Curve, just on top of that track. And with the YUV Curve, what I'm going to do is just crush the blacks. And what this is going to allow me to do is only let the blooming, the glow effect, to come through on the highlighted portion of that clip. This is really, really cool. So now we're really manipulating this film look and uh, really being creative with free tools here. So another cool thing with Edius is we can always split before and after and just have a look at what we've done. And press OK. What I'm going to do is just turn off this track and just have a quick look. So as you can see, we've added this diffuse glow just to the highlights. And um, it might be a little bit strong, so I can just hold shift and drop the opacity there. And once again, let's just turn it on and off. How awesome is this? We've got a diffuse glow, we've got film grain structure, and we've got this beautiful saturation, this awesome sharpness. Maybe a little bit strong there. We can always go back into the Gaussian Blur, just drop that down to 1%. And remember too, we can always control how much is glowing and where, just with this curve. Press OK. How awesome is this? Let's have a look at another shot. This one is a uh, cool Ethan, a brother from a different mother. And uh, once again, we'll just uh, fit the width of the clip to fit our project. And uh, let's just have a look full screen. We've got beautiful exposure here. We've got nice detail. But um, look how clean and clinical the shot looks. We just need to add that film grain, that organicness. You're going to hate me saying that word <laughs> after a while. So uh, maybe you already do. Um, we could just go up to our bin and grab it, but I'm just going to, you know, control click and duplicate this one, bring it over. And uh, straight away, it's, it's that digital look, that, that it's just giving it this edge. And that's without any tweaking whatsoever. Ethan's going to hate me for posting this. <laughs> but um, once again, uh, let's just make this a little bit bigger so we can see what we're doing. I can always just back the grain off uh, using the opacity slider there. And um, I actually want to go a little bit larger with the grain structure on this one. So I'll just click on the grain clip, go to the information palette, double click layouter. And if we just go to the stretch percentage, and I'll make that maybe like 88%, you can choose whatever you want. And um, just have a look at that. So now we're looking at like some super grain. And unfortunately, uh, the screen recorder won't capture a nice frame rate for you. But um, wait till you download this yourself and you'll be able to see how awesome this looks in motion. It really does look like film. I swear to God, it looks like film. So <laughs> we haven't even tweaked this yet. So um, another thing we can do is drop back the intensity there. I'll stop talking in an American accent right about now. Oh, um, yeah, so that's looking pretty good. That's looking pretty good. But um, all right, so another thing we can do is not only can we, you know, color grade the clip underneath the film grain. Now, this is really powerful. I mean, the film grain is constantly interacting um, with the clip that's underneath it. So I can just add a little bit of contrast here. And I'm also going to add some saturation. Maybe a bit much. Let's just drop that back a little bit. Curves are so awesome when you get used to them, by the way. <laughs> and uh, if we just have a look at before and after, so we can just split the screen, just have a look before and after. I swear it's starting to look more like film. Press OK. And let's just have a look at that full screen. The way the grain moves and interacts with the image is actually blending with pixels. And depending on the brightness of the pixels underneath the film, it's going to blend in a different way. And this is what's so powerful and flexible about this technique. I mean, it's nothing new. I guess I'm just offering it to you um, for free. <laughs> That's what's new. It's freaking sick. One other thing we can do is um, manipulate the actual color of the grain on top of the clip. So if I go to Effect, grab the YV curve, drop that on our top grain, then we can actually change the color of the grain on top. And what does that do? Well, that it almost it's like you can customize and emulate your own 
film stock is in terms of like, is it daylight balance film? Is it tungsten balance film? And you know what? You know, with a few tweaks here and there, I'm just using YV curves alone. It's starting to really look sick. Maybe it's just me. <laughs> anyway, moving on. Let's have a look at another more creative sort of uh, way you can use it. Um, this is a more cliche, old school sort of camera look. And um, I'll just fit this to the comp width. So I shot this one with the 5D Mark II, just using the standard um, H.264 settings. It's just a quick focus pull here. I think this is Jerry Guionis' uh, camera collection, actually. Yeah. Hey, Jerry. <laughs> Anyway, so um, as you can see from this shot, it's super sharp, super clean, there's no noise whatsoever. But if we add, let's just drop that onto the second track, and let's just duplicate that film grain up here so it's on top. We'll put it to 100%. Straight away, we've added this beautiful film grain, and I'll just turn that on and off so you can see. I'm not losing any detail. We've just got this beautiful grain structure. I've got to stop saying that. <laughs> And uh, let's take it a step further though. I mean, it just has this cool old movie look filter. So we'll just drop that on, old movie film. Drop it onto the bottom layer. And it does have a built-in film grain uh, section, but it, it's not real film grain like we're using. So it's nowhere near as nice. So let's leave that unticked, but leave everything else as is. Press OK. And if we just have a look at that, now we've got that sort of classic, almost classic actually, Let's make this um, a sepia color as well. <laughs> I'm gonna go monotone, drop that on the bottom layer here, and we're just gonna warm it up a little bit. And there's that classic old school look. I mean, so easy to do, but it's got that real film grainy sort of look. And uh, remember, we can always you know, enhance the size of the grain, the opacity of the grain. Let's make it 100% in this case. A couple of years ago, I uh, shot some stuff with Tiffany Riddell. Thanks for uh, coming down, Tiff. It was an awesome shoot. And um, it was a really cool shoot for me because I was testing out... Um, check out my blog once again. <laughs> my mates always give me shit about this. But I'm always pimping my blog. But yeah, it's a good blog, isn't it? I don't know. So if you go up to the blog and on the right-hand side, you'll see one down here called... Uh, Destructive Creation. Just click on that one. And um, on this shoot, I deliberately tried to create an organic look because, you know, I'm always looking for something different, always trying to manipulate my images differently. I thought I'd do it in camera this time, and I, you know, put some glass in front of it, smashed the glass. I used some um, really, really cheap ND filters that had this beautiful red sort of tinge to it. And, um, yeah, I got some awesome-looking shots, but not until today have I actually overlaid film grain as well onto these shots. So let's have a quick look at that as well. Uh, this shot is particularly one of my favourites. I just love all this, um, you know, broken bokeh and all these shards of light coming through that flare and that beautiful deep red look. But um, once again, I'm just going to go information, layouter, and fit this to the width. So if we go to the effects and we'll grab a wave curve, drop that onto our film grain layer this time. First off, if we double click the wave curve, we can actually adjust the contrast of that film grain. And what that's going to allow us to do is control how coarse the grain looks, what portions of the grain really shine through. So it's a really effective technique and quite flexible. But if you also look at how the YUV um, filter is structured, we have our luminance values here in Y, but we have our color values here in U and V. Now the cool thing about this is, when you adjust the top blending layer, you're not actually affecting any of the colors underneath um, per se. But what you're doing is you're affecting how this top layer blends, how these colors blend with that bottom layer. And this gives you a really cool sort of flexible creative way to change almost the film stock that you use. I'm just going to adjust it, like so, and just give it a completely different look. Let's have a look at before and after. really emphasize like the flare and stuff like that. Now remember working in a 10-bit color space is crucial. 10-bit minimum is crucial when doing stuff like this. Blending modes and things like that, they really do start to show up banding. Now in this um, recording right now, I'm getting no banding whatsoever. So maybe you're seeing some banding online due to 8-bit compression. But um, if I had this in an 8-bit color space, settings, project settings, um, and we change that to say 8-bit, 
you're going to start seeing heavy banding artifacts uh, when it comes to graduated smooth surfaces. So it's really important that you do work in an editor that one, supports blending modes, but two, uh, supports a 10-bit color space. It's really, really important for anything color correction wise, but especially when you're doing blend modes. But how awesome is it, the fact that one, we can color grade that bottom layer however we like, but we can also just manipulate that top film layer and give it a completely different look. So we're adding grain structure, we're giving it that organic texture, but we're also changing the color of it as well. And remember, that's just using the YUV uh, color portions of our YUV channel. Let's have a quick look at another shot. Uh, this is one of my favorites from the day. And uh, I'll just move it over here just so we've got a fresh sort of place to, to play. And um, I'll grab that film grain and drop it on top there and I'll just delete that YUV curve. So with this shot, um, I'm just going to fit the width of the comp again, just real quick. And same with our grain, which it already is. All right, so let's have a quick look um, at before and after. So already I'm shooting um, wide open on a 51.4. So we've already got some fringing problems and some softness here and there, but I've also got that broken glass filter in here as well. We've already got a nice organic look going, and then as soon as we add the film grain, it just adds that extra texture. But I'm just going to try one more time that the sort of um, blooming highlight glow mode, just to emphasize it even more. Um, so I'll just click, drag, press control, so we've got two of those. Go to effect. Uh, go to Gaussian Blur, and I'm just going to blur it. Look how beautiful that 10-bit Gaussian Blur is. It's really nice. Real time as well. So we just Gaussian Blur that to about 2%, and then we go Effect, Screen, and now that blur is coming through. We just need to adjust how much of it comes through with a YUV curve. And we just drop those shadows. Only the highlights glow. So here we have a pretty freaking awesome look. Get on this film grain stuff. It's super fun. Uh, it's super free. Hopefully you've enjoyed this tutorial, um, but it's more so just a heads up and to get you to start thinking creatively. I love this shit. Thanks for visiting my blog. Thanks for all the support with my tutorials. Um, I really appreciate it, guys. Have a good day. Just quickly, while we're looking at my breakfast here, I have a theory uh, about the cinematographers of today. And, uh, you know, I've been reading a lot and, uh, you know, listening to interviews of my favorite cinematographers uh, in the industry in Hollywood and, and even local ones. And often most of them are much older than me. And they all started with film, motion picture film. That was their camera. So what I noticed, though, is a lot of these guys, and if you, I mean, watch behind the scenes from uh, Seven. Darius Konji talks about, you know, flashing film and the way he treats his film stock and what film stock he used and why he used it. I mean, this seemed to be a pattern. This seemed to be something that I noticed that cinematographers, the greats, they all had this innate knowledge of how to process film, what film was good for what, and, um, you know, doing even little tricks to the film to get it to look a certain way. They had this extraordinary knowledge um, and this experimental attitude with the post-production side of things, with the developing side of the film that they shot with. Now, today's cinematographers, and I guess I could call myself one of today's cinematographers, we're lucky enough to work with cameras like RED or even a DSLR. We're lucky enough to see exactly what we just shot instantaneously. And we're lucky enough to have tools, free software, to grade footage, to manipulate our footage. But what I'm starting to realize is, we don't work with motion picture film, but we still need to understand the medium we're working with. We still need to be able to push the boundaries and really know how to develop the footage that we've just shot. And that's why I study color correction every single freaking day. That's why I'm thinking about ways to manipulate my footage to get it looking a certain way. That's why I look at my breakfast and think, cine grain. The best cinematographers, they know everything about their camera but they also know exactly what to do with the footage later on.